When you are trying to complete a Generation 1 tier list like I do every week, every single run can't be a hidden gem. Now we've seen some of the really bad runs like Ditto or Zubat, but today we dive into another run filled with literal struggle. With Alakazam being an A plus tier Pokemon, you would figure that just like Gastly is to Gengar, Abra would crush it, but that's not the case. And I'm not one to sugarcoat things, and up front, I'm just gonna let you guys know that this run is very tedious, and it's just not very good. But I do think it is interesting, and I can confidently say that this run surprised me, but probably in all the wrong ways. For the month of October, I would like to do some spooky runs, and I have some ghost type, some dark type things planned, and I wanted to at least do one psychic type, and I thought to myself, what's more spooky than something that doesn't even learn damaging moves via level up? And here we are. Now I know several other channels have done Apra runs, and I'm also cognizant enough to know that there will always be overlap for these kind of runs, so even even if you've already seen someone else do Abra, you haven't seen me do Abra. So before we begin, I'd like to quickly say that I do solo run content often, and if that sounds like something that you might be interested in, feel free to subscribe to be kept up to date. Likes and comments are really what fuels the algorithm and gets that precious engagement up. So if you'd like to help the channel grow, whether you are a returning subscriber like Professor John Gotti or someone new, just scroll down and type in Struggle Bus because we'll be on that ride for a long time today, fellas. And one last thing is that I've been streaming every Friday here on YouTube, so if you'd like to stop by and catch a live run or just chill for a bit, I'd appreciate it. But with that out of the way, sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda pop, and let's just get on with it. Right from the start, I mess up this very simple task of getting the potion out of my PC, and that's just the perfect start to this run. Today we'll be playing on yellow version, and if you caught some of my recent streams, you know that I've been playing this version a lot more, and I think we'll have plenty of time today to get into why I think it's important. But like always, I set Abra as my starter via the Universal Pokemon Randomizer, I set up my DVs, and I mistakenly gave the name Struggler to Jigglypuff in my very old run, but Abra is here today guys to show you why he is the one true struggler. Overall, there's a lot to unpack, so let's just kind of get started here with the raffle battle. And unless you are the luckiest person alive, this one is impossible to win, and this kind of sets up your expectations for this early game. Now, Abra's level up learn set consists of one move, and one move only, and that's teleport. Now, you can use it outside of battle. It's got some utility to it, and when you use it in a battle, you can flee from a wild Pokemon only. Now, this means to actually win a battle, you have to use up the 20 power points of teleport, and then, and only then can we start to do a little bit of damage. If this sounds tedious, you honestly have no idea. The first order of business is to pick up every potion available to us and then spend all of our money on more potions. Now I believe you can get 15 total here and these are key because it's kind of your soft limit on slightly faster training in this early game. The second order of business is to deplete your PP and I could have started doing that earlier but I didn't. It is what it is. I'm not doing an optimized run and I hope if you don't understand it'll become clear very soon now since this is my first run I do make some stupid mistakes now imagine my complete happiness when I accidentally ran into this trainer by mistake and then I realized I haven't saved the game at all and needless to say I'm just really overjoyed blacking out so that I don't have to start the game again and since I've already spent all my money anyway it's just it's whatever I just carry on I restart the process of depleting teleport along the way so as I deplete teleport and grab the rest of the potions. Let me just say a couple of things real quick. Uh, the first is that out of every overlay I've ever done, this is by far my favorite. I think it's great. I wish the colors for every run came together like this. And then second, let's talk about Pokemon Yellow and why you'll be seeing more of it on the channel. Now think of things like, let's say, Nidoking, King, Kangaskhan, Tauros, and countless other Pokemon that struggle on Brock. The thing that I love about Yellow is that it does several things to make the game easier 
easier earlier for the trade-off of being harder later. Now the main two things that yellow does better for Pokemon that does not have great Brock splits is that one, Brock's Pokemon are two levels lower, and two, there's an additional two trainers to help out with experience. On top of that, little bitty things like the Light Years Junior Trainer Sand Streak doesn't have Sand Attack, and then after doing the Parasect race like a million times, and then doing multiple stream redos of older runs like Snorlax and Nidoking King in Yellow with great success, I feel really confident that this is going to be the best way to truly get an accurate Gen 1 tier list by fully utilizing both games to give Pokemon their best chance. Now as far as the run goes, there's also one huge critical point of why Red and Blue would be much worse for Abra where it wouldn't matter for most other Pokemon, and that's the fact that you can't buy potions in Viridian like you can in Yellow, and since it'll be a while before we can even fight trainers period, that alone would likely add another hour to our Brock split. And this all together is why Abra is on yellow today. And remember that my current worst Brock split is two hours of in-game time. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So let's get down to brass tacks. Let's talk about strategy here. Now due to the nature of using struggle, uh, due to the nature of Abra being incredibly frail and the fact that we are, that potions are a finite resource, the only Pokemon that I want to face are wild metapods. Number one, they are evolved. They give more experience than most Pokemon. Number two, they can't hit you back. And number three is that even if they use Harden, Struggle's recoil damage is based on how much damage you deal, so it really doesn't matter. And at this early stage in the game, I can only beat two metapods before dipping into my supply of 15 potions, and that's not too great. Now here early, I'm getting very lucky with things like double metapods back to back, and it's not always going to be the case. Now during this long and arduous journey, there are going to be lots of times where I can just go quite a while without any Metapod encounters, and it is tempting to just go for the other Pokemon, and I do sometimes, but honestly it's not worth it because you just got to be patient for the Metapod, it'll pay off, it'll be more efficient in the long run. I train and I train, but I do want to save a few potions for the Trainer Gauntlet coming up, but I would like to just call out the overall process here without potions, since we'll be doing that eventually. Now the act of going to a Poke Center, healing, replenishing your PP, and then going out and using up teleport so that you can use struggle is a process that can take about six or seven minutes of in-game time on its own, and that's kind of where most of the time in this early game is going to start to balloon up and add up really quick, but we must press on. And you'll also notice that there's some resets now. That's because I pushed the limits of Abra a little bit too much, and we'll see later that two resets is nothing in the grand scheme of things. Now here's a quick example of how not getting decent Metapod luck can really just get out of hand and add to the overall game time quickly. There are several times that we're not going to see, but this is just one example of where I get 10 plus encounters without getting a single Metapod, and this is fine, I'm not complaining, I just want to accurately paint a picture of the run for you guys. Now skipping ahead a little bit, let's take it all the way up to where I hit level 13, I'm down to just 4 potions left, and it's around this time that I kind of want to start to spend those potions to get through trainers. Here I'm not at full health, but I can't really afford to waste a potion without being maximum efficient. I want to get all 20 health points out of it, so I try the optional rival fight anyway, and it's a pretty futile effort. Even if I didn't get attacked at all, I'm not sure I have the power or the HP to get through this one. I lose it, I reload, I save a potion, I backtrack, I heal up, I do the whole process of depleting teleport, and then we try again. And this time, at full health, it's a little bit better. I do get growled twice by the Spira, but the joke's on him because my attack's so pathetic anyway. No one cares if I get debuffed. And the problem here with this battle, like most of them, is Sand Attack from the Eevee. And I just miss too much and I get taken out. But this is important because it makes me feel like this is definitely possible. But I fell two more times and from there I decide that I'm just gonna go train because I'm gonna have to eventually anyway. And off I go to train another level. Let's skip over that and go back to more attempts on the rival. And we're gonna cut a long story short here. I fail four more attempts here, but eventually I'm able to get some things to go my way. I barely survive at one HP at the end of the day, and finally, nearly two hours of in-game time, Abra has got its first victory, and honestly, a little tear rolled down my cheek. I couldn't be happier for our little psychic cat creature. Alright, so Scott did cover this on his Abra video, 
but it's so obscure and we're literally never going to have another reason or probably another chance to cover it on the channel so i'm going to put it in my video too so with potions running thin there is a little way we can get just a little bit more money now if you meet these very specific requirements if you defeat the optional rival battle you haven't beat brock yet you haven't caught any additional pokemon and you don't have any pokeballs in your inventory professor oak will then give you uh, some tips and give you five free pokeballs now i have seen this on reddit a couple of times over the years and i guess it's supposed to be uh, designed as a way to help really dumb players but honestly these requirements are just so obscure that if you needed this sort of help you'd probably not be able to figure it out anyway so who knows either way it just kind of exists to eke out another potion and slightly lessen the load of this truly awful early game now it's time to take on the rest of the trainers and to be honest this part isn't too bad the second bug catcher does take some luck so I skip it do the rest of them and then backtrack but honestly there's no reason for me to bloat the video to like an hour long I know the the run isn't that good but honestly guys we're just hitting a and using struggle like there's no reason to have a pretentious hour-long video for this run so let's just keep it going eventually I do hit another wall at the light years junior trainer and I can't do it at level 16 and that probably doesn't bode well for Brock but I do try anyway because I'm stubborn. I'm not at full health and I know I can't win anyway so what's the point of using a potion? I just want to get a gauge of the situation. I want to get a lay of the land and I could maybe get the Geodude to half health and it's looking like I really am light years away from facing the rock solid Pokemon trainer. Now with only Brock and his gym trainer left and potions getting low we just have to grind because there's no other alternative and here's where we'll start to get in some good time skips. Now let's cut ahead at level 18 to about the three and a half hour mark and now I'm able to outlast the light years junior trainer and that's the last optional trainer down at level 19 I go back to Brock to see where we are at and we're just not there yet I can almost take the geodude out and I think I probably could with a little bit of luck but I would never be able to get past the onyx at this level so back to the grind we go and guys being out here in Viridian just kind of does some things to a man I played a lot of yellow version and there's lots of runs where I don't see a single Pidgey inside of Viridian 4 Forest, but when you've been out here in the forest for like four and a half hours things start playing tricks on your mind You start getting seven straight Pidgey encounters and you start wondering hey Is this a good luck omen for things to come? But now we can just jump ahead to nearly six hours and we get another Brock attempt here And now I can consistently beat the Geodude, but I'm still pretty far off from the Onyx still in my mind I was estimating that I would need at least four more levels that would put me at a level ending in five which is good for damage rounding and if you don't know what that is don't worry about it and that's just tw level 25 is my next goal that's all you need to know so guys i mentally prepare i hunker down and i get ready for what i hope is the final stage of grinding and i'm going to spare you from it because i'm a good person and eventually guys let's end this saga once and for all at a whopping eight hours and 52 minutes of in-game time i'm level 25 i'm exhausted abra's exhausted he's battle hardened and let's see if this is sufficient enough because honestly it has to be because I'm done grinding with struggle. On my very first attempt, I get the Geodude down and I fail, but I do get the Onyx to yellow health. And honestly, I think we can work with that. And I'm going to show some failures here, but I do fail overall 10 more times before I finally get the attempt that I want. Now, there's absolutely no strategy to speak of here. And I'm just spamming the A button. We're automatically using struggle. And I'm just hoping and praying that the AI cooperates. Maybe I get some luck here and there. And maybe we can just end this nightmare. There's really no input from me. I'm just leveling up and hoping. I will say that another little thing that yellow does to alleviate some bad Brock splits is that the Geodude does not have defense curl here and that means that you don't have to do little silly things like pray for crits while you pathetically hit it with resisted damage like you have to do in some of the more painful runs in red and blue and finally after 27 resets I can put the Brock split to rest it's been a metaphor
metaphorical and literal struggle here today and i just get a few buys at the right time maybe i get a crit here and there but honestly at nine hours in the details are not important what is important is this honestly very impressive eight hour and 55 minute brock split guys think about this wrap your wrap your brains around this even zubat had beaten the entire game at this point under my old rules when i was slower but this run is one huge mountain and we are not at the peak just yet guys we're just beginning we still have a little bit of struggling left to go but honestly no one cares to see or go over these pre mount moon trainers instead let's get to what's important and that's mega punch now long time viewers might know that i actually like this move despite it having piss poor accuracy but never in my entire life in any of my runs have i ever been so happy to pick up mega punch because this signifies the end of exclusively using struggle and it's not great don't let me act like this is like i picked up a uh, hyper beam or something like that but it's much better than the previous strategy that we've been doing for nine hours keep in mind that abra doesn't have great attack and honestly nothing's gonna save this run but at least we can start pushing through the rest of this content and i say pushing through it because let's just look at rival number two real quick because we're really over leveled right now and mega punch has good base power despite abra being really weak i can just punch my way through with our over leveled cat boy and it's not all sunshine and rainbows i do try to brute force my way through some things i run out of pp like on this triple geodude hiker but at this point i don't care about resets give me give me the resets you basically need to fight this guy because seismic toss is very useful for something with low attack and no coverage moves and considering that we are over leveled the flat level damage actually does a huge chunk at this stage in the game and it must be said that as useless and as painful as teleport has made the run it does allow us to teleport back to the pokey center and save a little time because normally you can't do this in yellow now if you had actual good moves with teleport i do think it could be actually good for some time skips but it is worth showing at least once to be thorough now let's take a brief look at misty i use mega punch on star you and on the star me seismic toss is a two shot at this range and it's safer to use because it has better accuracy and it's not affected by x defend if misty wants to use that so let's just keep up the rapid pace down at the ssn we can actually learn body slam so i pick it up but i did forget to heal and for the first time in history this youngster with the nidoran beat someone and that's pretty embarrassing so let's stop talking about it I get the rare candy and then it's on to rival number three even with abra i just don't even bother to heal up and i easily get by this and guys i watch a lot of solo run content whether it's to show some support or try to learn a couple of things to make myself better but don't you guys just hate it when someone's commentary is just literally like some droll play-by-play -play calling with no flavor even in like the insignificant battles like they just won't skip anything and that's just kind of a thought i get sometimes but that's neither here nor there i guess i can let you guys know that i picked up rest and spoiler alert i never even use it although i did think about it several times next up is surge and mega kick almost gets the job done done for Raichu but it doesn't and that's all there is to say and if you guys are learning yellow version the biggest tip I can give you guys is that just don't forget your free squirtle because it functions like Lapras and red and blue for strength and surf and right after that we get to use teleport again for a minor time skip so that's pretty cool moving ahead to rock tunnel and let's look at our dear old friend Dylan the self-destruct hiker and there's some trouble here to no one's surprise I don't heal perhaps I'm overconfident or maybe I just didn't think about it but either way a turn one self-destruct puts me in my place and then the same exact thing happens on the second attempt now for some reason i don't know why i just refuse to heal here and that's probably just the mindset of a man who went through over 10 hours of abra already but i just kind of win here i take one move and it does pretty good damage because i'm already kind of low but no self-destructs are used and the flat 34 damage of seismic toss is enough to get us by i thought about using rest here but honestly i knew that i would have eventually just get by without it moving ahead you already know what time it is if you don't i'm sorry the run was one of probably is the worst one that we'll ever see in the early game and things have picked up significantly but now we got this very high speed we got this very high special we're a psychic type and finally we get access to our ultimate move so i grab a sodi pop and i head there immediately and obviously the run has just went from really awful to what will mostly just be really easy 
Now things like the Rocket Hideout, Erica, and Rival Number 4 in the Pokemon Tower are just so trivial with Psychic that we can just stop inflating the video length because it's just a series of one shots and no one needs to see that. Now going down to the Safari Zone, it's worth mentioning that I picked up the three accessible PP ups to use on Psychic and then I pick up the final HMs of the run. I buy a few more Calciums and I have a choice here on where to go. Now in Yellow, Koga is much more annoying and I think Rival number five generally is easier. Looking back in hindsight, we'll talk about this in a minute, I think I could have done Koga here, but I opt to go to Silvco to get things done, and after visiting the 10th floor, it's time for our first big test of the run since Brock, basically. First up is Sandslash, and I let a Psychic rip, but it doesn't one-shot in here. I completely mess up this battle, and it's disastrous. I take a Sand Attack, and I go for a Body Slam in the hopes of saving PP, but it doesn't knock it out, resulting in another Sand Attack, and from there, I miss some, I end up taking a ton of damage, and I'm moving on, I'm missing about 66% of my health, with two stages of my accuracy debuffed. I do make it a little bit further, but at this point, I'm already doomed, and we already knew that this would be a reset. The next attempt, I go for a Seismic Toss into a Psychic, and this is a mistake because I should always go for Psychic first in case it crits, because it's got that one-shot potential. Either way, I take one Sand Attack, and then we move on. Magneton comes in, and I miss a Psychic, but eventually, I'm able to progress, but I do take 40 points of damage from two Sonic Booms for my trouble. Ninetales is next, and I make a similar mistake by going going for body slam and it gives the opponent another chance to chip me down and seriously this has got to be said body slam just isn't very good for abra and from doing this run i can almost certainly say that seismic tosses topless damage is superior in pretty much all situations i'm able to progress and even though i get down the cadabra the vaporeon with its a plus tier sprite just look at it it's great it takes me out because i'm simply too low to get the job done on the next try i get critically hit with a slash from Sand Slash, go figure, and there's no point in showing the rest of this battle, I'm a failure. I have a great run after that, but the progress ends with a timely crit from the Vaporeon, and it keeps Cook's win streak active. And finally, this is pretty much the key point that I had to get right to win this. Now the main thing was doing enough damage on Sand Slash to either one-shot it or trigger a retroactive potion to get by with no damage, and that was really huge for this one. From there, I do take a crit and some a pretty good bit of damage but by the time it's all said and done, I make it to the end, but I don't have a lot of health. Now Vaporeon is an absolute beefy tank, but it doesn't do much damage, and with our high special, I think we can do this if it doesn't crit, and despite a final last second sand attack at the very end, Abra just dusted off, and we finally get by this one. Now in hindsight, I think facing Koga might have been safer since all his Pokemon are actually weak to Psychic, but I was just so scared of Toxic and Evasion moves giving me a hard time. These are things you usually correct in optimized runs. We're not doing that today. And we did reset a lot here, but for a run at the 11 hour mark already, I don't think anyone's surprised by that or really cares at this point. I also just take Lapras from this dude because I'm feeling pretty petty today. It's my Lapras. Give it to me. And we're skipping over Giovanni too. I then pick up Mimic and let me just say that move sets for Pokemon Yellow for the trainers, especially the deeper you get into the run, are so much improved in Yellow yellow, which by association makes Mimic much stronger than it already is, so I picked that bitch up. And today, I'm still, for whatever reason, I'm still a little bit skittish about Koga, and I figure I would just go ahead and fight Sabrina. Now this might be a mistake, but in my lifetime, until my dying breath, I'm only doing one vanilla Abra run, and you'll take it, and you'll like it. And here I'll keep it brief for you guys, but I have two more resets here and it's because of Abra hitting an early flash and the accuracy drop just cost me down the line. There's no need to deep dive into it, but much like our Abra, her Pokemon are frail and eventually on the third attempt I get by despite taking a flash from Abra and some seismic tosses on the Alakazam get us by after he sets up Reflect and let's not dwell on this one. Next up is Koga and I jumped through all the hurdles I could to avoid this one, but let's see if that caution was warranted for him and his little buggy boys. And guys, I don't know how much the extra levels factored in here, but I just one-shot every single Venonat, and even though the Venomoth can survive one and does obscene damage with Leech Life, it's
It's a very quick and very simple battle, and if I had to do this one over, maybe I would use some candies if I had to, but I would definitely come here first before Sylph for more consistency, if such a thing even exists in an Abra run. The only place left to go is Cinnabar, and after wasting a lifetime in the early game, I'm not looking to do anything extra anymore. This leads us to an 11 hour edition of Tombstoner, brother. And now we can press on to the next main battle with Blaine. And there's just not a lot to say about this one other than the fact that I won is a testament to how bad Blaine's AI can be sometimes. Early in the fight, I'm essentially just dead to rights. I get confused, I take some damage, and there are just countless times where this one could have been over. And at the end of the fight, the Arcanine just uses back-to-back -back reflex, and I'm able to squeak by this one, but I'm not complaining. I'll take it. Let's keep it rolling. And I do learn memory here but it's just not really necessary just yet and when I say yellow version gets harder later in the game Giovanni is more than likely the one single trainer that gets the biggest boost my man is buff in this version now this fight is easily the toughest battle in the game for Abra specifically and a lot of Pokemon in red and blue like let's say Charizard would be significantly lower on the tier list if they had to deal with this much improved battle because he actually has rock and grass ground type moves, believe it or not, what a concept, and he even has coverage moves like Thunder on both of his Nidos to deal with like water types. So let's see how this one goes, and immediately, we can see. If I don't one shot the Dugtrio, I'll just get hit by an Earthquake, and I'll get one shot. Cool. I try again just to make sure it's a, like if it's a range or not, and I'm able to progress, but then you get to problem number two, and that's Persian. Now Slash wouldn't be good for us at any health range, but since I'm already low, and I can't one shot it either, this is another pretty quick reset and at that point it's already time for some candies now damage rounding happens for levels that end in 0 3 5 and 8 so getting to level 48 is the first test I still can't one shot the duck trio but I get by nonetheless and then we get to see a slash from Persian that can 100 to 0 us so that's some valuable information to know I go up to the next range at level 50 and I try again and this time this is where duck trio is no longer a threat level 50 still isn't good Good enough for the Persian but Giovanni just uses a guard spec and I just get past it anyway. From there the two Nidos are both one shots with Psychic and they are nothing to worry about so let's take a look at the usually lowly Rhydon. Well it has 150 attack and a stabbed rock slide and when I fail to knock it out in one hit it just pummels me into the ground. Now this one felt like it was possible at this range with some luck but to keep things a little bit more consistent I opt to go ahead and battle the rest of the trainers in the gym before coming back to this problem. Problem. I fail once again, but I start consistently making it to the Rhydon, and after using just one more candy to get to level 53, for the word of the day, damage rounding, I'm able to actually get past. And it turns out that the levels just don't matter. Giovanni just uses a guard spec at the end, and I'm able to get by, so that's that, I guess. And this one wasn't great, guys, but we've already went through a 9-hour Brock split, so I think we'll be fine. Next up is Rival number 6, and honestly, guys, we aren't getting a play-by-play -play for this one. I think that this this fight in Pokemon Yellow is easier than in Red and Blue, and that's the only late game fight in this version that has that distinction. I feel like this fight is almost identical to Rival number 5, and he doesn't even have an Alakazam yet, so needless to say that I just kinda nuke everything down for a pretty easy one shot victory, and if you want the deep dive for this fight, you can just rewind it back to Rival number 5 because it's exactly the same. Now we have the Elite 4 coming up, but I have Rest and Reflect TMs in my pocket if I need them. But Honestly, I'm kind of just indifferent about the Elite Four. I don't think it'll be too bad, but I've been wrong before. So let's just get to it. And I use the rest of my rare candies here. We're gonna start this at level 60. First up is Lorelai with Dugong, and Abra has one play to be really effective, and that's Spam Psychic, baby. And it just kind of works. I get a badge boost from a Bubble Beam Speed Drop, and with 220 special, I just take out the Dugong and the Cloister without taking pretty much any damage in return. Slowbro is next, and I bring this up because it's time for some overkill. We mimic Amnesia, and when it's all said and done, I'm at 787 special with the plus 6 boost, 
and then I just quickly go on a tear. Her Pokemon never stood a chance with a special that massive, and this one is very quick, it's very consistent. Next up is Bruno. I'm a psychic type. Does anyone have any questions? No? Let's move on. After that, it's Agatha. I'm a very fast high special psychic type. Does the class have any questions about this one? No? Great. Let's move on once again. Now we get to Lance, and honestly, I was kind of wondering how this one would go, and on the very first attempt, Psychic doesn't one-shot the Gyarados, and I get one-shot with a Hyper Beam, so that's pretty cool, and it wouldn't be a video unless I was getting murdered by this monster. I go at it again, and Gary just goes for a Dragon Range, and this does allow me to get past. And did Yellow Version Pokemon without coverage need to mimic Ice Beam on the second Dragonair to make this fight really simple, but the first one just decides that I need more doses of Hyper Beam in my life, and while I'm hobbling around at 6 HP, the writing's on the wall. I fail due to a Hyper Beam once again, and my brain suddenly starts working again, and I'm like, oh yeah, I picked up Reflect specifically for this moment. And on the next attempt, Gyarados just goes for a Leer and a Dragon Rage, and with Reflect set up, I'm comfortably able to get to the second Dragonair, I take Ice Beam, and I make short work of this battle, and it's just that easy, guys. Just don't forget about the TM you've been carrying around for hours that you researched before the run. It's easy. Now it's time for the champion fight, and with how the last one went, I'm honestly, I'm not too worried. And then immediately I set up Reflect, and the Sand Slash instantly gets a crit on the Earthquake, and that makes me eat my words. I go back in, I set up Reflect, and all he does is go for two pitiful Poison Stings, and I'm able to get the Sand Slash down and move on. Then my big brother comes in, and I'm taking Recover for some insurance with Mimic, and after some back and forth and back and forth with Seismic Toss and him using Recover, I can eventually move on. Next up is everyone's favorite Pokemon that looks like an egg but it's not actually an egg and this one is a slog. It can chip away at me slowly but I have Reflect set up and I can heal back damage with the cover and we just go back and forth for a while and the most eventful thing to even happen in this fight is that I get leech seated and then we just continue forward. Ninetales is next and I'm very safe here just to go straight psychic without too much worry and there's just not much to say about this one. Magneton is next and this is where it gets a little bit dicey. I can't one-shot this Pokemon once again, and I get paralyzed with a Thunder Wave. This means I have a pretty decent chance to miss my turn entirely, and I'm getting extremely low. Fortunately, I don't miss any of my turns, and I'm slowly able to recover back health and take it out, but the real question is if Abra can fight through the paralysis. Vaporeon is the final obstacle, and I take some decent damage here, but I decide not to go all in on straight damage Damage, and I pull it back to play it safe. I recover when needed and when I see my opportunity some psychics finish off the battle and ultimately finish off the run. and Abra has done it. And there's not much to really say about this one. It is what it is. And I think Abra had a worse start than even Ditto, and that's saying something. The fascinating thing about Abra is that it actually has a really spectacular mid to late game when it finally gets psychic, but using struggle and grinding 25 levels before Brock is not something that I would recommend for most people to go through. But before we look at the stats, let's just hop into Mewtwo for some bonus footage. And something that really threw me for a loop here, I had no clue that Cerulean Cave has a completely different layout from Red and Blue. Now to my knowledge, this is the only area of the game that was completely redesigned and it really caught me off guard. And if any of you know why it's that way, let me know. But anyway, let's look at Mewtwo. And I just kind of use Seismic Toss here. It doesn't really do much to me. And after a few turns, I just win on the first attempt. Great job this week, Mewtwo. You did fantastic. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, Abra finishes with a level of 64, 48 resets, and a final time of 12 hours and 5 minutes. I don't need to commentate on that. It is what it is. Now for some closing thoughts, and there's no doubt about it, Abra is one of the worst runs that's possible to actually complete. Let's bring up that tier list, and immediately we can go down to what I like to call the NO tier, where you should never do these runs unless you are a completionist or a masochist. We've done Ditto, we'll never do Weedle, so let's not talk about it. It's basically like one out of 400,000 to get that one done, but I digress. But Abra sits 
sits at the top of the NO tier list due to the virtue that all of its awfulness is very front loaded and it actually has a really good late game. Now, it was actually really interesting to me and I'm glad the overlay looked as good as it did because it kind of kept me invested early, but I'm just happy that this one is out of the way. I will say that Abra would easily be the most improved egg move run in the history of egg move runs, but Scott already showed that off in his video he did a while back and I'm kind of hesitant to just keep following and piling on to stuff like that, but let me know if you would be interested in that. And I think that's all I have for you guys today, and if you made it this far, I really appreciate you and thanks for the support that you provided, and we'll continue the spooky trend next week with what I hope to be a better run, hopefully a little bit more fun, and take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys then. Bye!